Hey guys and welcome to this week's edition of That's What You Think. Uh, before we start this week I just want to say thank you to all of my brand new subscribers. I think you're all fantastic. Um, I really appreciate the support especially this early on and with the channel being so young. I do hope you are loving the content so far and you will continue to tell like your friends and family and anyone you know with children and stuff as well because hopefully eventually this channel will benefit them too. But um, from the bottom of my heart thank you so much. It really does mean the world. Now this week we are talking about all of the things that they never actually tell you about going into labour and giving birth. Um, for those of you that are squeamish, we are going to be going over some of the more gritty bits. Um, I am going to keep it quite light-hearted because uh, it's, you know, it's, it's quite a gross subject to talk about, but it's quite important because, uh, from my experience, there is stuff that you you probably should know before you go into labour. Um, so we are going to be keeping it quite light-hearted, but if you are squeamish please do skip this video um, and come back next week or you can at least try watching it you never know it's completely up to you <laughs> um, but for now we are going to step right into it so roll those titles Okay guys, so like I said, this week we are talking about all of the things that no one ever tells you about going into labour and giving birth. So, we're going to kick it off by um, talking about one of the most common misconceptions of going into labour. So, uh, a lot of mums seem to think, and I genuinely think that TV has a big influence on this belief um, for this particular thing. A lot of women think that the first sign of you going into labour is your water's breaking. Now, I thought that with my first one. Those of you that have watched the first video uh, will know that I'm actually on baby number four now. Um, so I've, you know, I've done this a few times. And with my first one, I genuinely thought that, you know, when you first go into labour, your water's breaking. That's how you know you're about to have your baby. Um, this is absolutely not true. Uh, with the three children that I've had so far, I didn't go, my waters didn't break with any of them. Um, and I didn't go into labour with my waters breaking. I actually had them broken at the hospital a little bit later on in my labour. So um, please do be aware that this doesn't, you know, it doesn't happen for everyone. But uh, for the vast majority of women, uh, your waters won't actually break until a lot later on in the labour. So do just be aware of that, especially if this is your first baby that you're having. Um, please don't try and wait for your waters break uh, for it to be the first sign of your given birth, okay? Um, now, the second one is probably one of my favourites um, because a lot of people who are going to be new parents or have got a baby on the way or they're getting really close to um, giving birth seem to think that once you go into labour it is literally non-stop and it's go, go, go and, and there's all these things happening around you. That's actually not true. Um, you are probably going to be one of the vast majority of women like myself. Um, there are the very lucky few who only have labours of a few hours. Uh, so I've got friends whose labours have only been like five or six hours and I swear at them <laughs> because it's not fair. Um, all three of my labours in order were 29 and a half hours, 22 hours and the last one uh, with my youngest was 63 hours. Um, labour is really boring guys, it's really dull for a really long time. Um, when you first go into labour, and I mean when you get that first ping, not sort of what we call active labour, when your contractions are really strong and they're actually starting to do something. Um, I mean right from that very first twinge that you get when you know you're in labour, um, it's really boring for a really long time. Uh, so if you are going into hospital um, to have your baby, please make sure you pack loads of stuff to keep you occupied. So books, games, magazines, anything that you can think of, um, especially for your birthing partner as well, because 
even though you'll be bored for a long while um your body's actually going to be doing stuff and your poor birth and partner's just going to be sitting there and uh, trying to occupy themselves while being supportive um one of my later videos uh in a couple of weeks will be what to pack in your hospital bag so if you are going into labor soon don't forget to come back and, and tune in for that one as well okay now the third one uh no one ever seems to talk about and it really bothers me because it was one of the ones that i actually had no idea about whatsoever and i genuinely think that all women who are about to give birth should be warned about it um and what i'm talking about is is after pains now a lot of you are looking at me and going what on earth are after pains you know it's just one more thing it doesn't sound very pleasant here's a news flash for you guys they're not very pleasant at all um now like i said before this list of things might not be you uh it might not apply to you um none of this stuff is generic for every single woman so um please do bear that in mind but the vast majority of women will get after pains now while they are extremely hard to describe um the only way that i can sort of explain what mine were like is um they're like having contractions for a day or two after you give birth and you get no warning they just hurt they they hurt so please 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 be aware that that does happen um everyone thinks that once you've had the baby all the painful stuff's over and you can just get on with being a mum and unfortunately because um the whole episode of giving birth is glorious as we all know uh there's extra stuff on top as well so um don't be surprised if you do get random contraction like pains for a day or two after giving birth as well um i would suggest if you are on your own um having someone round for at least a couple of days after giving birth um just to sort of give you a hand with that as well all right now, uh, number four is um, another thing that, that actually I didn't know, um, which is essentially you, you actually give birth twice. Now, while a lot of you are watching this going, what on earth is she talking about? Why? I'm not having twins. I'm not going to give birth twice, blah, blah, blah. What I mean is no one ever tells you that after you've had the baby, you then actually have to give birth to the placenta as well. Um, because that thing doesn't just disappear on its own, like most of us seem to think it does. Um, you actually have to give birth to the placenta as well. Now, there are two ways you can do this nowadays. Um, first one is straight after you have your baby they can give you an injection in your stomach um it's an anti-clotting injection and basically it, it speeds along the process of your body getting rid of the placenta so you're not sort of waiting around for half an hour 45 minutes to then give birth again um and the second option is that you can wait for your body to do it um after three births and now about to do the fourth one i would highly suggest to everyone i mean it is your choice it's your birth it's your labor it's it's completely up to you but if i can suggest anything i would suggest having the injection purely just because once you've had the baby you want to just have that time where you are enjoying that little person joining you like that little person that's been wriggling around in your tummy for nine months and you've been dying to meet them you want that time to be able to spend with them and your birthing partner whoever that is and you just want that time to be able to relax whereas if you don't have the injection you are waiting around for it could be anything from like five minutes to 45 minutes um, for your body to get rid of the placenta itself. And it is quite painful. Um, I found with the injection, it's not as painful. Um, so I would definitely suggest just to sort of speed the process up and then you can get on with enjoying being a mum. Okay. Now, the next one 
is one of my favourites. Now, if you are like me and you have binge watched One Born Every Minute, or you have watched labour programmes on TV, or you've had friends that have had babies even, you will have been told at some point in your life that every woman poos while they're in labour. I'm here to tell you that actually you don't. Um, a lot of women do, it's not false information, um, but the whole fact that every single mum poos when they're in labour is a load of rubbish. Um, I've been very fortunate actually uh, with all three of mine so far and I know I'm probably going to jinx it now um, but with all three of mine so far I have never actually pooed while I've been in labour so um, rest assured ladies there is hope for you yet um, it doesn't happen to everyone so please don't be scared about it um, don't let your partners uh, take the mick out of you for it um, if it does happen to you sod it, who cares, you know, your body's going through so much and it's a natural thing and so many women do do it, it's not anything to be embarrassed about but just know that it doesn't happen to everyone, okay, so there is hope for you yet. <laughs> um, so the next one is something that I think is really important for first time mums to know. Um, I was never sort of that nervous about going into labour, not even with my first. Um, I was just kind of like a roll with the punches type of person back then. Um, but I know a lot of people are, are very nervous um, and a lot of my mum friends have said the same. With their first they were very nervous about not knowing what to do or when you're in labour what to expect or, or what you need to do at, at what point and, and when do you start to push and all of this sort of stuff. If that is you, please just relax, okay? Just relax. Don't let it stress you out. Don't let it panic you because at the end of the day, as soon as your body is ready to have that baby, your body will take over and your body has an instinctive knowledge of what to do. Okay, your body will know what to do by itself. Okay, it will tell you what to do at what point. So please don't worry. Just uh, sit back, enjoy the fact that you are bringing a gorgeous little person into the world, and um, yeah, don't don't worry about the whole labour bit because honestly, your your body knows what it's doing. All right. Now, before I continue. Um, there's been a few points so far. If you do relate to any of these or you've had children before and there's other stuff that I've not brought up yet that um, you think would be helpful to new mums, please drop it in the comments because that's where everyone's going to be looking for extra information. So uh, if you have got something that hasn't been mentioned um, up to this point, drop it in the comments, let me know and um, we could probably be able to include it in a later video as well. Alright, now I want to take a few moments and talk about medication when you're in labour. Okay, now a lot of mums have ideas of what sort of medication they want. So some mums will say right from day one, I'm having an epidural, that's it. Um, other mums like myself will want a more natural labour, they will want to do most of it themselves. Um, I only had gas and air with all three of my previous ones, uh, that was a personal choice. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm any more of a mother than the, the mothers that choose to have epidurals, it just means that that was right for me at the time, okay. Um, I genuinely think that we need to stop all of the mum shaming. I, I genuinely believe that. Just because a woman's had an epidural does not mean that she's any less of a mother than someone who's not had any pain relief. And it really, really bugs me. And that's one of the things that not many women actually know when they're in labour. Also, if you say right from word go to your midwife, I want an epidural when I'm in labour, then when you're in labour, you decide, actually, do you know what? I want to give it a go just on gas and air. That's fine too. You are free to change your mind 
whenever and however many times as you want because it is your body, it's your baby and it's your labour, okay? And not a lot of women think that. They think whatever's in their birthing plan they have to do. Um, it's good to have a birthing plan. It is great. It gives the midwives and the doctors and your birthing partner an idea of what you want. But that can change at any point. You could turn around half an hour away from giving birth to your baby and go, right, I want to do it this way now. And they will, if they're any sort of midwife or any sort of birthing partner, they will adapt around you because at the end of the day, it's your birth. Okay? Now, my last point is one that I find really, really important. And it's really, really, really important to know that every single woman goes through this okay everyone now hospitals i'm going to talk about hospitals okay now most of you who are watching this um who are first time parents or who are doing it for the second third fourth 15th time um will be having your baby in a hospital now what a lot of women don't know is that where you register your birth and the hospital that you choose right from day one, if they're not doing what you want, if they're not clicking with you, if you're not feeling comfortable or safe with that hospital, you can change your hospital at any time. And they are not allowed to say no. They are not allowed to refuse you at all, okay? If you're going to one hospital and they're not listening to you or you don't feel comfortable with them or they're just not making your labour journey enjoyable, you are more than free to change your hospital at any time. You could be a month away from giving birth and no, it's not advised to change your hospital that late on, but if you choose to, they have to abide by that and they will then send your notes off to the new hospital and obviously you'll have your bounty pack as well all right and with your folder and all of your notes inside all right you can change your mind and change your hospital whenever you want in your pregnancy okay whatever it takes to make you happy and more comfortable on your labor journey all right now that is it for this week ladies and gents thank you again so much for watching um if you've reached the end of this video uh thank you for sticking by me once again and uh again if you've reached the end of this video and i haven't mentioned something that you think would be worthwhile please do just drop it in the comments below um i read every single comment so please do drop it below let me know and don't forget to like and comment and subscribe if you've got any parent friends or any mother to be friends or pretty much any friends at all that you think would enjoy these videos please do share with them as well and get them to subscribe click the bell too please um and then you'll find out as soon as i post any new content but until then thank you so much for watching my video once again and i will see you all next week Ta-ra! That's what you think.